Hey everybody, it's BatJackJW. Thanks for clicking on this video. Okay, we're taking a look at the Inland manufactured 1911. All right, this is their World War II uh, replica or their variation of a World War II um, style 1911. Okay, and we're going to talk about it, see how it compares to the real thing and some of the things that I've done to it. Now, okay, if you keep up with the channel, keeping up with my videos, uh, if you just happen to stumble across this video, uh, there's a couple things that I've done, all right, and videos I've made already on this thing. When I first got this gun, uh, it was all parkerized flat black. Was not happy with that. Uh, being especially that the early ones that Inland had made were the correct color, very similar to what I what you see here in this color. Now, how did I achieve this? I actually painted it myself. I spray painted this thing myself. Check out my other videos and you'll see the videos on doing that. Okay, and me talking about it mostly, but it's fairly uh, simple. I mean, I'm not gonna take you the process of doing it. You just spray paint your gun. <laughs> okay, why choose the inland over anything else? Like say the auto ordinance. There's an auto ordinance or car, uh, I believe Car Arms owns them now. They offer one and it's uh, significantly cheaper than the inland one, okay? What sold me on the inland? Why did I want the inland? Well, really it's these roll marks. Check it out, okay, right there. That's really cool that they went that far to do that. Now, that's uh, this is like what the Colts would have on them. I have a video on some Colt uh, World War II 1911s. And um, they added, instead of the car, obviously they can't put Colt on there, but uh, they put their own, which I thought was really cool that they did that. And then on the other side here, you can see there's no uh, United States property stamp or anything, but it does have the, uh, that, that they took the extra measure to do that, which is really neat, okay? So some of the things we're going to look over here, and uh, what better way, let's uh, take a look at an authentic one. This is a real deal, United States property, 1944, uh, government issue, you could say, you know, even I uh, got the cool uh, United States property stamp there, you can see, um, even right there, they put the U.S. Army uh, 1911A1, um, how does that stack up to what they put? They put the uh, 1911A1 government on theirs. Okay. Now this one here is a Remington Rand. So the stampings is a little bit different. They didn't put patent dates on it like the Colt. It just has their uh, Remington Rand Incorporation, Syracuse, New York, USA. Okay. And this is a typewriter company. Really cool. Okay. So the overall look right here, let's just kind of, um, let's look at the top here. All right. The, um, Slide release is pretty spot on. I, you know, of course, we're going to be kind of really going through it right here. You can see how the top right there is not serrated, but the top on that one is. Of course, we're just going really extra picky here. <laughs> okay, you got the scalloping on the frame that they added in World War II uh, for, in the, uh, well, it was 1924 or something like that when they changed it from to the A1. Okay, they shortened the trigger. Okay, so you can see... That's a pretty short trigger there. They're stamped some checkering on the front of it, which is cool. Okay. Now the inland one is more of a medium sized trigger. Um, it's got some serrations on it, but it's a medium sized trigger. It's not the short trigger. Now here's the thing also keep in mind, Noah's video is going to kind of run a little long. I did talk to the guy at inland and they said that they had modeled uh, this after an authentic 1911 uh, from World War II. So that's what we're going by. And here I have an authentic um, 1911 from World War II. Okay. The sights. Okay. We even got, um, there's, yeah, there is some checkering on the sight. I don't know how well the video will pick it up, but there, it, there is some checkering on it. Uh, some serrations or something right there. So that is uh, apparent and ideal on there. There it is right there. So they did do that correctly. Okay. Thumb safety. Right there, there's some uh, checkering on the top of it. And they got that right on theirs, okay? This is the wide spur hammer like seen on the Colt. Um, this is still uh, kind of a wide spur hammer, not quite as wide as that one that's on there, not quite as wide as the ones on the Colt, but that just could be what Remington ran had done. Um, beaver tail, they extended a little bit for the World War II versus the World War I model where it would give you hammer bite because there wasn't very much, so they did a good job on that. Arch mainspring housing, this one's got serrations. The Colt has the checkering on it with the lanyard loop. Okay, that is close to the Remington Rand here. 
serrations lanyard loop okay they got the grips down okay these are a little darker that could be because of the age and type of plastic that they used back in the 40s uh, this is you know good enough close enough uh, you could even um, take these and throw them in some writ uh, fabric dye and darken them up a little bit if you wanted to uh, the other thing is as because I did spray paint this as the spray paint wears here and there it'll get closer and closer and be darker like this because underneath here of course I did not remove any of the original parkerizing that was on my inland okay rear sights on the inland you can see it really close they did a good job on that in comparison to the real deal i'll do a side by side here how about that okay they did a really good job at copying that down to the t okay the other thing is this is a big stickler for me all the companies always miss this the original barrel hoods are blued of course there's some wear on it from it being so old and being fired i went ahead and blued mine uh it was not blued originally it was uh, left polished metal so it's uh, that metallic silver okay so that was one thing that I did it was different. All in all, uh, aesthetics wise, they're, they're really close. Uh, this inland, far as the roll marks and everything, it's as good. It's as close as I can see that some other company has done. Now the, uh, Colt has offered a World War II replica, which is unbelievable. It's spot on. It's great. It's really nice. Um, they're pricey and sometimes hard to come by. I own the World War I Colt uh, reproduction that they did. Amazing pistol. It's one of my favorite 1911s by far, uh, for sure. So that's what you're going to get out of the inland. Bear in mind, the finish that they're using now is more of a, a uh, like a flat black um, parkerizing, which I was not um, very not, I was not happy with that at all because the originals that I saw that Inland was doing was very close to this right here. So again, I wound up spray painting mine uh, with Rust-Oleum spray paint that was kind of a grayish kind of green color, uh, very similar to the originals there. Okay, so, and uh, okay, last but not least, before we let it go, we're going to cover this um, on the other side here. Hopefully you can see it right there you'll see it there it is the the biggest telltale it's a series 80 there's the firing pin stop uh this gun this 1911 is a series 80 style pistol okay for a lot of people that's a deal breaker right there uh there's a lot of people that say um right there that would they would not buy it for that obviously um that is not a design from the uh the original days okay so john moses browning would not recognize that system okay so some people may that like again that could be a deal breaker for some people for me it's not that big of an issue i still bought the pistol i still own it i'm still happy with it i painted it and um you know just to avoid investing more money into it to try to get to try to correct something that i thought inland should have just left alone and kept doing what they were doing originally so there it is a comparison um, from the inland 1911 to World War II style to an authentic World War II 1911. I know I'm not uh, the most detailed video, but hopefully I, I've done enough here to where it gives you an idea, an impression of what you're going to be getting if you're looking to purchase this pistol or if you already have this pistol and how close it comes to the real thing. So thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. I'm Batjack JW. Thanks for your time.